the Vita Cast, episode eight. Uh, we're recording on December tenth, two thousand thirteen. I'm your host Tyler Oltoff, and with me today is Kyle Wakeling. Hey guys, how's it going? Brian Sharon. What's up, everybody? And Yuki is here in the chat as usual. Sadly, our first uh, attempt at recording the podcast fell short because there was a clicking sound. So hopefully. There's not a clicking sound after we're done with this. If there is, you won't even hear this because we won't upload it. So <laughs> let's let's head on to new releases with Brian. What do you got this week, Brian? Yeah, this week we have a bunch of new releases. Uh, specifically in North America this week, we have Doki Doki Universe, Majong Royal Towers, Sorcery Saga, Curse of the Curry Gods, all released tomorrow. That's uh, December 11th. And on December 17th, Terraria will also be hitting North America. I know uh, we have one member of staff who's a little excited about that. Um, But let's see him get sad in a moment, as in Europe this week, Terraria and Doki Doki Universe will be available tomorrow. So they'll be ahead of us on the Terraria front. Uh, As for PlayStation Plus and sales this week, uh, the big one is Spelunky is on sale in North America for the price of $7.49, but... If you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you can also grab this treasure for $3.75. That's $3.75 American. And um, I also want to remind you that this is cross-buy, so you get the PlayStation 3 version as well. So that's two games for the price of one for potentially $3.75. And that's all we got this week. Nice. And that was one of my games of the week, and I recommend it. So... Go grab that, especially for the price. It's, that's really good. It, so. it's, is it not like the price of a Starbucks latte? You're the guy from Seattle, so you tell me. <laughs> it is, unless you're not including a, a tip. Oh, so. you tip those guys? Well, you got to, or they'll get mad at you and spit in your coffee next time. That explains the taste. <laughs> <laughs> then again, I don't drink Starbucks coffee, so... I, eh, yeah. <laughs> not much of a coffee person. Uh... I forgot to mention, but Jasper was in the original recording of the podcast, so sorry, Jasper, that technology failed us today. Uh, hopefully, he'll be able to join us in a successful podcast next week. Um, but let's head on to the news. So we got some release dates and announcements to talk about. Uh, Brian already mentioned, but Terraria has been dated, so tomorrow, you lucky European people grr, are going to get it first. And then next week, uh, North America is going to get it. So that's good to hear. Finally, they have news about that. But, but yeah. Also, a new game was announced for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. Uh, Kodaku? Kodaku? Kodoku. I, always, I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Kodoku? Yep. Yep, I was saying it wrong. Uh, but yeah, that's a, a stealth-like horror game. And it sounds interesting. Uh, it's... The Vita definitely needs more horror games, so I'm welcoming it it with open arms. So, Kyle, do you know more about this game? Or Brian? Yeah, I I wrote the piece about it when the news came out. Um, Basically, you're stranded on this mysteriously haunted island with a paranormal phenomenon based from Japanese folklore. And you eventually come to the source of what this uh, paranormal activity is. But it's up to you to get off the island and prove what you found on this island. So it looks like it's going to be more of a cerebral type of adventure, and that's kind of what we need on the Vita. A scary game that doesn't necessarily involve weapons as well. Interesting. So I totally skipped what we've been playing. So after the news, we'll, we'll go to what we've been playing. This is we're, all, we're kind of on a time limit right now because I have to go to work very soon, and like we said earlier, the podcast decided not to record. So we're a little out of whack right now, so please excuse us for that. Um, but yeah, let's continue the news. Um, Telltale Games announced two of their new projects, Tales from the Borderlands and Game of Thrones. And Telltale has been uh, releasing games for the Vita, so it's, it's almost it's kind of safe to say that these could be possibly making their way to the Vita. So those were announced at the VGX Awards thing, and I don't think anyone was really expecting Tales from the Borderlands, but 
Yeah. What about what do you think on that one, Brian? I think you're the one that yeah. broke those or, or wrote those stories. Yeah, I had to cover VGX while you guys did the uh, lounge play, so I obviously got the short end of the stick. But um, <laughs> there were rumors before about Game of Thrones; they just got confirmed, which is good. Um, yeah. I think yeah, the big surprise was Tales from the Borderlands. That's a collaboration between Telltale Games and Gearbox Software. Um, but it will be a Telltale adventure, so uh, don't get that mixed up, mixed up. It is a Gearbox property, though. Um, I think no, I don't think anybody was expecting that, and um, I'm still kind of in shock that this thing exists. But um, it, it's good to it's good to see some risks being taken. That's one thing for sure. Yeah, and let's hope they make their way to the Vita because they make great games. So it's always welcome to the platform. <laughs> All right, uh, next Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment has been dated in Japan for April 24th, 2014, and this is a title that Kyle knows a lot about. So, Kyle, do you want to talk a bit about this? Sure. So, Sword Art Online is based on an anime out of Japan that's actually quite popular over here in the West. Um, It's basically about uh, people who go into a video game using Nerve Gear, which is like a virtual reality headset. Um, and once they get into this game, Sword Art Online, which is just released, um, they're locked in. So there's no way to log out. There's no way to get out. Um, if you unplug yourself from like the real world, you're killed. Or if you die in the game, you're killed. So pretty much the only option is to fight your way through and beat the game in order to get out. Um, the, the, the game itself is based on the anime, um, and seems to be more of a uh, soul sacrifice boss fighting game, um, maybe with a little bit more of an open world concept um, than soul sacrifice has. But we'll we'll be looking more at that in the future. Yeah, that's uh, something I'll keep my eye out on because I did like soul sacrifice and whatnot. But let's hope it actually comes to comes to North America or to the West. Um, so one game that hasn't come to Europe yet finally has some details for a European release, and that's Yee's Memories of Salsetta. It has a projected date of February 2014, so it doesn't have an exact date, but look for it next year in February. Um, also, Stealth Inc. Lost Clones DLC is up, so if you really like Stealth Inc., there's some more DLC for you to dive in on. And I've I've enjoyed what I've played of Stealth Inc., but I haven't really gotten back to it. I've been way too busy with all these other games, and now that I know when Terraria is coming out, oh, you guys aren't going to see me for a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> also, uh, Killzone Mercenary. We we talked about it earlier in uh, in previous week's podcast about them releasing a series of updates, and update one finally came out, which fixes the size of the previous updates and um, fixes some bug issues, but sadly Kyle and I experienced some extra issues added after that, and I'm hoping those aren't... or I'm hoping they get noticed and they fix those, because it's they fix one thing and they break another, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, Kyle, you got something? Yeah, it, it just seemed like the, when you were partying up, the, par- the party app settings um, seem to not allow you to choose the level or your game type half the time. Um, I'm not sure if that's because of the new patch or just something that they've implemented on their end, Um, but it's definitely not working 100% right. Uh, Although that patch was good because it did free up about 800 megabytes of space. So more games. (laughs) We could all use more games. That's true. So yeah, the first patch is out. So next is, I I don't know what the second patch was. I can't remember. Do you guys know? Well, you're talking about the fourth patch scheduled? Or, yeah, the the next one that's scheduled. You're, you're pulling a George Lucas on me. You're going back and forth with the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Insert Hayden I'm, Christensen. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think I put you guys on the spot. You guys don't know what's the next one? Yeah, I don't remember what the next one is. All right. Well, yeah, anyways. <laughs> I don't know either. That's why I asked you, so let's move it along. Um... Iron Galaxy, the guys behind Dive Kick. Uh, Dive Kick. Exactly. Brian knows how to pronounce it better than I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> they have started working on Borderlands 2, um, which is good to hear. So that means the game will be coming out hopefully late 2014. Um, but yeah, they started working on that. So that's good to hear. <laughs> that's all I really got for uh, that one. 
<laughs> well, yeah, so we were joking around about Dive Kick, and I think a lot of people may be more familiar with them from Dive Kick recently, but it should be kept in mind that they did work on the Bioshock um, 2 DLC. So um, they do have experience with first-person shooters. Yeah, that's good to hear. I was When I first announced who was working on it, I did get a little worried. I was like, Dive Kick, that's it? What? <laughs> I can't do the voice. I'm, I'm bad at that. <laughs> but but yeah, knowing that they have some more experience in different uh, genres, and especially a first-person shooter genre of its caliber, that's good to hear. So if you were worried about who was working on it, don't be. <laughs> or worry less. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, so in other news, uh, Sony Santa Monica, the developers behind PlayStation All-Stars uh, Battle Royale, have committed a pledge to continue working on uh, fixes. They uh, they planned a release of a bug fix a while ago, and they kind of just never brought it up again. So a lot of people were started wondering what's going on, and they finally commented back saying that they're they're still working on it. They've just been really busy with a lot of the ports to the PlayStation 4 involving flower sound shape sound shapes and some other titles. So if you're still playing uh, PlayStation All-Stars and you're wanting those uh, bug fixes, you should be getting one hopefully soon. Um, also, Fire Sprite is a studio that is rising from the ashes of Studio Liverpool, which was the developers behind... Um, oh, wow. Brain fart. Wipeout. Wipe, that's Wipe, it. Wipe out. Wipeout 2040 out. <laughs> Yeah, they're getting together and starting up a new studio, so that's uh, it's good to hear because that game was awesome, and a lot of people were very disappointed when they found out Studio Liverpool uh, was no was no more. So it's good to hear. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're sticking around. Um, they actually, it's funny because in in uh, August of 2012 they said you know we're we're dissolving this company, but they didn't even really dissolve it. Um, most of the core people from uh, or, or, you know, past people have rejoined uh, Fire Sprite. So it, it seems that a lot of the people coming from Studio Liverpool are still there. Um, they've also got some fresh faces, and they recently worked on the PS4 Playroom. So it's not like they're, you know, sitting idle or just starting up again. They've been working. Nice. That's good to hear. Um, so more PlayStation Vita TV evidence is building. Uh, Andrew House had an interview and talked a bit about it. Um, Kyle, you wrote the story on this, right? Yeah, um, pretty much. It, it seems like Andrew House was talking. Um, I, I forget who he's uh, getting interviewed by, um, but he he pretty much said that they had always had uh, a different plan for releasing the PlayStation Vita TV in the West. Um, so that that pretty much right there leads us to believe that it's always been the plan to release the PS Vita TV. Um, and that it's coming. So it, it's really the biggest hint we've got so far without them actually coming out and saying, hey, you know, get ready for it. Right. So, yeah, if you're looking forward to PlayStation Vita TV, you've got some more evidence that it's coming. So sit tight. Uh, also, yesterday we got some new firmware. Firmware 3.01 was released, and not a whole lot was changed uh, visually, but looks like we got some stability fixes and bugs and whatnot. So that's good to hear if you're uh, experiencing experiencing any issues. Hopefully those were squashed with this update. Um, also, Soul Sacrifice Delta has a Japanese demo coming up in a couple days on the 12th of this month, and our very own Kyle is going to be switching over his account to try it out. Uh, you excited for that, Kyle? Oh yeah, I uh, I actually switched over to my JP account um, when the original Soul Sacrifice demo was released and played that. So it'll it'll be interesting to play the you know spiritual sequel, even though it's not necessarily a sequel, um, and see how that fares compared to the original. Nice. Yeah, you're gonna have to let us know what you'll be doing in a post, most likely, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll be posting my thoughts I think on the uh, site, and we'll definitely talk about it next week in the next podcast. Cool. So I uh, look forward to his post and his thoughts next week, of course, when we record. And Brian has some some news about Batman and 
Isaac. Yeah, so there's a, there's a pair of things that aren't listed uh, in our itinerary. Um, yeah, so Batman Arkham Origins uh, Blackgate received its first patch, and this is a big patch. It, it essentially fixes every reported bug, and there were a lot of them that appeared for the game, including the notorious Black Mask um, bug, which basically ended your ability to play the game. So um, if you were holding off on all the bugs to be fixed before picking it up, or you put it, you got stuck in the middle of the game, well, now is the time to return to it. And um, as for Isaac, um, the news is about the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, which is a uh, port of the Binding of Isaac coming to PlayStation Vita. Um Basically, Edmund McMillan has sorry Edmund Edmund McMillan has his own web. Stutter, stutter, stutter. Yeah, you think? <laughs> um, Edmund McMillan, McMillan. Oh Jesus, I can't say it. <laughs> Ed, Sound it out. Edmund McMillan um, from Team go. Meat uh, has his own website. Has his own website, and he answers uh, fans who ask him questions. And a couple of fans asked a couple of probing questions about rebirth and he had a couple of interesting things to say so he said that the first thing he said was to one fan is that the game will have uh scalable difficulty which means that um players who are maybe not as able to play a, a difficult game like binding of isaac is notorious for will be able to lower the uh, difficulty but also classic players can keep it as normal um but he also detailed a bunch of the stuff coming into the game um there'll be 15 new items, 25 new enemies, and 12 new bosses, at least. Uh, and furthermore, there'll be new floor secrets, challenges, rooms, and room types. Um, and moreover, it'll also include co-op and what he describes as a few things people might not expect. So uh, people who are already fans of The Binding of Isaac uh, or new fans, uh, there's a lot to look forward to in that version. Interesting. I've never played it or even heard of it, so I'll have to keep my eye on it and see if it's something I'd be interested in. So, I don't know if you've seen, but we're doing a new segment called Lounge Play, and Kyle and I are working on this, and Kyle has a lot of the information that he'd like to share with you. Okay, so our first Lounge Play was actually last Saturday. Um, We did Killzone Mercenary, Need for Speed Most Wanted, and finished it off with some Hot Shots Golf World Invitational. Uh, Brian actually joined us for some kill zone, but had to leave as he was busy writing posts while we were having fun. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> this is something we're going to be doing every week now. Um, it's a, it's pretty much our reach out to the community. So not only do we want you guys to play with us, but we want you to start your own little groups in the chat and stuff like that and play with each other. So it's really just our movement to get you guys involved and get uh, multiplayer gaming going for the Vita, because really, it, it seems like a lot of the time when we jump on games, there's not a lot of people to play with, or it's hard to find, you know, games that are, you know, going without jumping into the middle, so um, it, it's really for us to play with you guys, and for you guys to uh, meet us, talk with us, and find your own games, so yeah, that's what that's about, um, and this coming Saturday uh, at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern or 10 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Um, we'll be starting our first game, which will be most likely Kill Zone, um, and then we will also be playing Soul Sacrifice and Little Big Planet after that. So if you guys want to uh, comment on either the already posted um, Lounge Play Number One post, uh, which details what we did Saturday, um, or there will be another post towards the end of the week, which you can sign up on. And we'll get you into a game with us, so look forward to that. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with that, so get on this, people. We need some some other people joining us, and I can kill you all in Kill Zone. so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's a challenge. I'm threatening you guys. <laughs> um, so Brian made a mistake, so why don't you correct that, Brian? Yeah, so I, I said all the North American releases were coming out tomorrow. They're actually out today, I believe. Um, so, yeah, uh, Doki Doki Universe, Mahjong Royal Towers, and Sorcery Saga, Curse of the Curry Gods are all available today. Nice. All right. Well, since I skipped it earlier, let's jump into what we've been playing. Um, I've been playing a few games, more than normal because of the lounge play. 
Uh, I got I jumped back into some Need for Speed. I haven't played that in a while, so that was that was a lot of fun. Minus some lagging that was a bit, was uh, happening during that. Uh, also played some more Killzone Mercenary. That's always a lot of fun to play. And I played a lot of uh, Hot Shots Golf with Kyle and some other members of the community. That was a blast. Uh, I I also played some Yeast Memories of Celsetta. I'm still early in that game, but I'm having a lot of fun, so I'm looking forward to see what where that game takes me. And I feel like I've played another game, but I can't remember what it was. Huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've never heard of HUD. Is that any good? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have a lasting impact on me. It was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so what I played this week, pretty much my time was spent going back and forth between Ease Memories of Celsetta and Stick It to the Man, other than the lounge play with uh, Tyler, where we played Killzone, Need for Speed, and Hot Shots Golf. Um, although, actually, I should say that Tyler and I have also been jumping into Hot Shots Golf at, like, the middle of the night for me and playing some of that. So that was interesting as well. But my main games I focused on this week, as I said, were Ease Memories of Celsetta. There we go. There's my uh, tongue tied. <laughs> um, <laughs> and really, it's it's an awesome game. I, I really recommend it to anybody who enjoys action RPG games. Um, it, it's very well done. Uh, looks a little bit better than a PSP game, but it's it's not uh, graphically impressive as much as it is gameplay impressive. Um, the story as well is is pretty good, so uh, really I, I'd recommend it to anybody who likes action RPGs or uh, even adventure games because it has a lot of uh, adventure elements in it as well. Um, other than that, like I said, I was playing Stick It to the Man, which the review went up today, I believe. Um, it's it's pretty good. Um, they, they've uh, injected a lot of really good elements into the game. However, it seems like they didn't do anything to balance them. So uh, one moment you're kind of getting, you know, funny uh, quips from somebody while you're reading their mind. The next minute you're stuck trying to find stickers while you wander around for 25 minutes. So um, the, the, the way the game's set up is kind of disjointed and they could have done a little bit better job of it, especially with the interactive elements. But it, overall, it's pretty good. I gave it a three and a half out of five. So have a look at that on the site. Brian? Yeah, I've been playing a bunch of stuff. I, I've, for fun, I've been able to play a little bit of Killzone Mercenary with you guys during lounge play, but unfortunately I had to run for VGX, which was fantastic. Um, <laughs> but uh, other than that, I've been playing a, a boatload of PlayStation mobile games. Um, the first, which you can find on the website, I reviewed uh, Passing Time by Honey Slug, the people who make Frol Bisher says. Um, it's a funny little soccer game or football for in Europe. Um, but it's not necessarily about soccer or football. It's basically a, a little bit of a puzzle game in which you have to do a bunch of different tasks using soccer players and use the Vita's touchscreen to pass. Um, you tap on a player, it passes to them. Seems simple. Um, but each player, depending on the game type, has set pass, and you have to find your the best way to the goal in most cases. Um, so I gave that a 4.7 out of out of 5, and I really enjoyed it. There's a lot of game modes for what you get on PlayStation Mobile, and it's a ton of fun, and there's a, it's actually a pretty charming game. Um, other than that, I've been playing Gun Commando, which is a Doom or Duke Nukem 3D-esque first-person shooter, so really retro. Um, you should expect a review of that up later in the week. Um, and I've also been playing Mononoke Slashdown, which is a 2D... Uh, action title, very similar in uh, aesthetic to something like Muramasa, um, but not necessarily with the Metroidvania type of mechanics. And then lastly, I've been playing Flower for review as well. Um, you can expect that later in the week, but uh, as a little bit of a preview for the review, it's um, it, it's a basically, it translates the experience from the PlayStation 3 um, when it first launched pretty well. It's a beautiful game, and it's everything it's been hope to be it's, it's everything it's been promoted as it, it, it's relevant to that so yeah that's what i've been playing i just wanted to mention that uh yuki's here with us in the chat and he's been playing ease memories of Celta, seta as well and the review for that will be coming soon i'm actually just editing it 
editing it up right now. Apparently, I can't speak either. Um, <laughs> it's spreading. <laughs> it's spreading. Brian, you've given us the disease. Um, it's the second recording <laughs> disease. That's what it is. Yeah. So if you, just so you guys know, if the first recording, you'll never hear it, but I would say it's probably the best podcast in history. Um, <laughs> I think that's why it didn't work. Um, Tyler's computer couldn't handle all the awesome, and I'm sorry. It was just oozing it. And, yeah. yeah. But this one is uh, it. pills in comparison. Yeah, we apologize for <laughs> that last one. Whew. Okay, so we kind of blew through all of this stuff here, so we're going to do a little segment here that we haven't done before, kind of get to know your podcasters more. Uh, we're going to talk about the game that basically made us gamers, what got us stuck into this habit of wanting to play more games and all this fun stuff we do, so... The game that I can remember that really grabbed me and made me want to play more games was actually on the Nintendo 64, and it was The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And I've played that game so many times. I've beat it countless times also, and I, <laughs> it's just one of the best games I've ever played. And I got lost in that world so many times, just enjoying everything that was going on. Like <laughs> I can beat it with like my eyes closed and that sounds really bad i know but but yeah so everybody here has played ocarina of time right yep yeah i, I remember having very similar experience with it when i was younger as well um i i i distinctly remember that opening part i think it's it's not kakarito village what's the first um area you start in it is uh that little elf village yeah yeah Kak- i remember playing just in that little village endlessly for the front because i didn't want to leave i was so amazed of how well the game worked mechanically and seeing zelda come to life it was incredible yeah and just like almost every song in that game is rememberable like yeah. i have the soundtrack stuck in my head to this day it's crazy i it's i literally bought an ocarina this summer <laughs> <laughs> can you play it no i can't i bought i bought them the prettiest one i could find but it's also like the most difficult one to play um, <laughs> so I, i'm a dummy and if you if you're an uh, avid listener or a reader of the site you know that already so <laughs> impulse buy i understand them yeah uh so brian uh what's what's one of your games well very similar um for me it just went a little bit earlier it was on the super nintendo the old snes it's in a Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past. Um, it was it, it's the game that had the most profound impact on me as a person, as a gamer, as a child. Um, it, it, it truly gave me this open world to explore, and the characters and the, just everything about it was amazing. I love. I, I can go back to that game at any point in my life, and it feels fresh, and it feels um, it feels very modern at the same time, despite how old it actually is. And I think you're seeing the love of that continue. Um, I know this is a Vita uh, Vita cast, but um, Nintendo is paying homage to that with a link to the past, a link between worlds. Sorry, The Legend of Zelda, a link between worlds. Um, They obviously care about that game, and there's obviously a lot of love out there for it. So, yeah, it it definitely hooked me. That's what made me. That's a great game also. I actually have... Like you said, this is a Vita cast, but I do own a 3DS, and it is a good game, The Link Between Worlds. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to play it yet, unfortunately. I've been so busy with all, all the, the TVL stuff, but uh, yeah, it's definitely yeah. on my list. But I'm also I'm almost a little bit afraid to play it. Uh, I don't want to uh, <laughs> ruin my memories as a child, I guess. I don't know. No, I understand. I, I don't think you would be disappointed if you played it. It's a real throwback with the new stuff in it. Okay. Like... I don't want to ruin anything for you. No. <laughs> there is a story, but I don't think you'd be that disappointed okay. or at all. I think you might like it. Cool. I'll check it out. Kyle, you still thinking over there? No, I've I've got something, but the only thing is I can't narrow it down to one. There, there's really, um, in, in my mind, three games that brought me into gaming. Whoa, way to outshoot us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Make us look bad. Um. Go ahead, say all three out. Or, or maybe it look, makes you look good because it only took one game to get your attention, but um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but for me, uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll mention the non-Sony one first. Um, on the N64, GoldenEye was a big one for me. Um, 
the multiplayer aspects as well as just the way that the game was set up were were perfect. I remember playing that game for for hours and hours on end, uh, doing crazy things like taping cardboard between uh, the screens so you couldn't see what the other person was doing back in the days when there was no <laughs> online multiplayer um, and stuff like that. It was just a great game and and it really drew drew me into uh, first person shooters. Um, other than that, though. Uh, the, the two that really hooked me on gaming were Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and Gran Turismo for PlayStation. Those games uh, I spent more hours on than anything. I, I probably dumped so much of my life into that, it's not even funny. Um, <laughs> to this day, I still go back and play uh, Tony Hawk's and Gran Turismo, and really they haven't uh, diminished in my mind at all as far as cornerstone games for me. So, yeah. Yeah, those are very good choices. I've played all of those and loved all of them. <laughs> yeah, great I think games. Tyler was talking about how great the soundtrack and um, or Ocarina of Time is. Um, Tony Hawk. I remember those first two Tony Hawks have like two of the most memorable soundtracks of the I agree. Days. <laughs> I agree. I have uh, some of the songs on my iTunes, so <laughs> that odes to that right there. Nice. Uh, Yuki is saying in the chat that uh, the game that hooked him was... Um, Final Fantasy VI. Uh, it was the best Final Fantasy for him. Um, he says it had an epic story, epic maniac enemy, and it was simply a good game. So yeah, I agree. Those Final Fantasy games were a lot of fun. Especially, I really like Seven, but I think a lot of people like Seven, so it's not a surprise there. Um, but yeah, those were our games that got us hooked. Uh, feel free to email us at podcast at the and let us know what your uh, game that hooked you. You could also tweet us if uh, if you feel like it. Whatever floats your boat. Can we put Whatever a name on this segment, community. Tyler? Can we call it hookers? <laughs> <laughs> what are your hookers? Yeah, send us your hookers. <laughs> I have to give them my full address for that. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh. So yeah, this is still going to be a pretty short podcast. Uh, I apologize for having those issues with uh, the first amazing recording. That was just so amazing. You're going to miss out. Um, Brian wasn't wearing pants like usual. Kyle was insulting me. <laughs> As usual. Jasper, yeah. <laughs> Jasper didn't talk much. Well, he was kind As of usual. In the oven, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He was cracking jokes. What a weirdo. You're going to miss our whole joke section. <laughs> yeah, Jasper's want to start it back Jasper's up. Jasper's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'm pretty sure that's all we got for this week. Um, we still Wait, no, it's not. No. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still got listener mail and game of the week, so. Yeah. so we still Hold on. Hey, listen. <laughs> Atlas just sent me a mail. Let's see what it is. It says fail. It's Dragon's Crown again. Okay, okay. <laughs> Every week they have fucking Dragon's Crown. So. Anyway. All right, Kyle, let's head on to listener mail. What do you got? All right, so our listener mail this week is from Liam, and Liam wants to know how we go about recording our podcast because he's starting one for a site he's working on in 2014. So I'll, I'll so, let you uh, interject <laughs> there, Tyler. <laughs> So being as I'm the podcast recorder, I mean the last episode or our last recording that messed up, I had I explained it so perfectly. It's going to be difficult to <laughs> really do it again, but I'll try my best. Uh <laughs> basically I use a program called Pamela that uh works with Skype and you can download that off the website. If you just search Pamela on Google for Skype, just not Pamela, you might find a porn site. Uh <laughs> And you can download that, but sadly, it's going to be discontinued in this month. So the fact that you're recording in 2014, I don't even need to even mention Pamela. So she's out. Um, but there's a lot of videos up on YouTube if you need help. I actually need to do it myself because of Pamela being discontinued. So we're going to be in the same boat as you, kind of. But uh, when we figure out what we're going to do... Uh, We'll, we'll let you know because we've got some options that we're working on, but we don't know if they're going to be if they're going to work properly for what we want to do. So, unfortunately, I can't answer that question perfectly. So I, I do apologize. But like I said, we'll let you know. Um, yeah, I think that that's all we got, right, Kyle, for listener mail. Yeah. 
All right. Um, whoa, where'd it go? There it is. All right, so uh, the game recommendation for this week is me. Yeah. Well, not the game. I'm not a game. That sounded weird. Um, last week, or not last week, last time I chose, I chose Spelunky, which is a great game. It is on sale, so go grab that. Um, this week, I am choosing Hot Shots Golf World Invitational, or Everybody's Golf 6? Yes. Is it 6? It's 6. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a great game. Kyle and I have been playing that a lot, and it was in our lounge play last week, and we had a blast playing with some of you guys. Um, but yeah, it's it's a pretty deep game for what it is. It looks kind of childish, but when you actually get into it, it's it's pretty good. I mean, there's a lot to do, like skill wise, like little things you got to watch out for involving wind. Uh, you got to realize that there's hills that are going to make the ball turn a certain way, and just a lot of things like the way you hit the ball can determine how it will roll when it finally lands and all that stuff. And it, there's just a lot of depth to it, and including the multiplayer, which is a lot of fun and works really well. Um, there's four player online, and then there's also eight player. I think continuous, so everyone shoots at the same time, so you don't actually have to watch the person uh, take their shot. So that's a much quicker round, but. It's less interactive, I think. It's it's more entertaining making fun of Kyle as he misses a <laughs> two foot putt. So or making fun of Tyler <laughs> as he you know chips it over the green. <laughs> ah, whatever. <laughs> hey, I had a really awesome chip in. It was an eagle from like sixty yards. So yeah, so, and then you were just telling me that you missed a three foot gimme. So <laughs> okay, it's a gimme. I can't do anything about it. it the computer takes it. Exactly, the computer lost for you like come on you must suck real bad for that to happen <laughs> okay so it was on a tiny cup challenge tournament so the cup like the hole was extremely small so but <laughs> but yeah it's a great game minus the gimme not working sometimes <laughs> and that's the only time it's ever happened so don't think it happens every time or often uh but yeah that game is it's pretty awesome so and it's an it's a release day game right came out day one right a launch yeah. game that's the word launch game i could not think of it between breakfast and dinner it's launch ah. <laughs> <laughs> ryan coming in saying some more words improperly that's what you pay me for right we don't pay you oh, okay <laughs> it's what we don't pay you for oh, okay it makes more sense <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that uh that's a fun game, so go grab that. That is my game of the week. Woo! So to turn uh, some some stuff around, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but John was on here in, from the beginning of the podcast, and if you've noticed, has not been with us for the past couple couple episodes. And I'm not going to go into it too much because it's it's his own personal stuff that you know we don't need to be talking about too much to everyone, but he's just taken an absence from from the cast and from TVO, but he's still around talking and whatnot, but he's just got some stuff to deal with, so we do wish him the best and hope that he returns soon, all better, so. Get better, John. Yeah, John. We love you, John. We love you, John. Let's not keep going up. We can't escalate this any further. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See who can do the highest voice. Somebody's dog at home. Mine like going cracks out back when back I get to a certain height. <laughs> well, another uh, thing I would like to do is Xbox off. <laughs> so if you're using your Xbox Connect right now, I'm sorry, I just turned your Xbox off. Um, actually, I have an Xbox One, and that's not how you turn it off. Okay, how do you turn it off? And can you say it very loudly, please? Xbox, turn off. Wait a second. Yes. There we go. Xbox. Do you have to say off. wait a second. No. Oh, okay. I that was that, it was like a script, like when you're reading an actor's script, and it has like you exit know, stage says, left, and you say exit stage left. <laughs> yeah, you see, you don't actually want to say that. You see, <laughs> being an actor of my prowess, impeccable quality <laughs> <laughs> of bullshit. No. What? <laughs> hey. What? <laughs> say what? <laughs> Anyways, this just got derailed. Um. I have to go to work in like five minutes, so I need to end this. So uh, let's, let's get out of here. So 
obviously you can find all the news and reviews and all the goodness that's coming out for the Vita on the Uh You can send in your questions for our segments that we do um, at podcast at the Vita Lounge.net. You can find us all on Twitter. I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. Brian is at Brian G. Sharon. Uh, Yuki is at Yuki underscore WR. And Jasper is at J-A-S-B-Z. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook. Just search the Vita Lounge. Um, you can find our new YouTube channel. Uh, we have it at youtube.com slash lounge play. Its name is the Vita Lounge, but that's just what we have it under. <laughs> uh, also, Kyle was mentioning earlier, we do have the new feature going on, lounge play. So those will be happening on Saturdays, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, and 10 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So get in on that and join us and have some fun dying by my hands in Killzone Mercenary. And I think that's all we got this week. This was the VitaCast from the Vita Lounge.